One of my favorite things a comic can do every once in a blue moon is to have a superhero sit down with one of their arch enemies and just talk. To just have the hero listen to why the villain does what he does, or to just be with them in their final moments so they don't pass on alone or scared. An example of this can be shown in one of my most favorite Spider-Man comics ever written by Chib Zdarsky. Knowing that Spider-Man is essentially a lightning rod to tragedy, I think why we all personally love Spider-Man is his indomitable will to somehow set aside all the grief in his life to help others, like he does with one of his mortal enemies, Sandman. Choosing instead of treating Sandman like a monster, but as an actual human being in his final moments. Now for context, Sandman's mind has become incredibly fractured and now can't properly distinguish the past to the future. What this means is Sandman can't properly hold up his human form unless he takes a special medication. However, the medication doesn't last as long as it should, causing Sandman to fall apart at any given moment. And the people of New York keep stumbling upon a broken Sandman running around town trying to keep himself together. And through word of mouth, it eventually comes to the attention of Peter Parker and the middle of writing a column for the Bugle. Meanwhile, Sandman struggles to keep his human form together, collapsing in front of a nearby hospital. This all comes to a head with Spidey swinging through the streets of New York to find Sandman until J. Jonah Jameson calls Spidey and tells him that Sandman has been seen in a hospital just a few blocks from where he's been swinging. So JJ and Spidey meet up in an alley near the hospital, and while Spidey changes into street clothes, JJ demands Peter to bring him in no matter if he's unwell. But Peter just wants to see for himself why Sandman is in the hospital in the first place and treat him like a human being. So Peter enters the hospital under the guise of Peter Parker and webs up the cameras so no one can see him enter Sandman's room. Dazed out of his mind, Sandman awakes to Spider-Man standing at the side of his bed saying that he doesn't want to start any trouble and that he just wants to know what's happening to Sandman. Sandman begins to tell Spidey that it just started to happen a week ago. He'd wake up as a pile of sand and it'd take 10 minutes to put himself back together. He tried seeing doctors and even villainous doctors at that, but no one had an answer for his condition. But one thing all of them knew for sure was that Sandman could die any day now. Spidey, upon hearing this, tries to think of ways he can save Sandman, like involving scientists like Tony Stark or Hank McCoy, but Sandman knows it's hopeless, as Sandman almost begins to cry. But holding back his tears, Sandman just says to Spidey that he should just go. He's lived his whole life alone, and there's no reason he should just die alone too. But Spidey peering out into the hallway, he sees officers coming to arrest Sandman. So Spidey quickly walks back into the room and over to Sandman, and quickly asks, Where's your favorite spot in the city? Later, the two arrive at a beach, and Sandman thanks Spidey for bringing him here. Oddly enough, he hadn't been to this beach since he was a kid, and he always used to come with his mom and make sandcastles. But his mom would only bring him to the beach because making sandcastles were kinda like his babysitter, while his mother drank for the entire day until the waves would start to creep up on the sandcastles, which meant it was time for him to figure out how to get the two of them home. But Sandman says that those long days at the beach were some of his happiest moments as a kid, and thinks it's like poetry, that he's just like a sandcastle now, just waiting for the waves to sweep him away. Sandman then even asks Spider-Man if he used to collect spiders as a kid, and maybe that's why he dresses up as a spider now. But Spider-Man says no, and instead says that he actually just collected wedgies as a kid. Moments pass, and Spidey thinks he should unmask himself because it feels wrong. He feels like Sandman shouldn't see a mask before he dies. But Sandman thinks otherwise, because he's always been Spider-Man in his eyes, and there's no reason to change that now. Plus, he always kind of had this idea that Spidey just was ugly under the mask, and it'd be a real pain if it turned out he looked like Chris Evans or something. So the two sit in silence, and after a while, Spidey still tries to convince Sandman that he can bring him to a specialist and that it's not too late. But Sandman says that he appreciates it and all, but yeah, it is too late, as he fades into sand and drifts off into the wind, thankful that Spidey was with him until the end and didn't treat him like a monster. He treated him like a human being. I hope you all like this pretty sad story, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you all on the flip side.